Now at six, a family's desperate search for their teenage son. There's, the the area has been scoured over and over and over and over and over with no sign of Riley. They're looking for answers after their son vanished while hunting along the Columbia River. Breaking overnight, a cargo plane crashes in Iran, killing all but one person on board. An investigation is underway as crews sift through the wreckage. Plus, did President Trump act against U.S. interests on behalf of Russia? A new report is shedding light on an FBI probe into links between the president and the Kremlin. And it's National Clean Your Desk Day, so Drew is putting the newsroom to the test. And busy journalist means busy desks. He's taking you behind the scenes to help our KGW News team get organized. The 6 o'clock hour of KGW News at Sunrise starts right now. Oh, there is so much to talk about this morning. First, though, we will take a live look at the Cedar Hills area. The trees are blowing around. It is windy out there on this Monday, January 14th. I know it's not. It always looks like snow. It does. It's, it's not the snow, light, yeah. but the light makes leaves. it look like snow. It is dry out there this morning. For it? Uh, we haven't had a lot. Have a five-hour sunrise show. No, we no. haven't had a lot of that guy in a while either. <laughs> Chris McGinnis. Yeah. Morning. Welcome Hi, back. Morning. Handling traffic for us on this uh, Monday. Christine filling in for Ashley on this Monday. Good to be Hello. here. And it feels good after that weekend we had. So beautiful. Oh, gorgeous blue skies. You know, we got a note from one of our producers saying, keep the show moving this morning. <laughs> but I don't know, I don't really like happy Mondays. I like to be grumpy on Monday, <laughs> especially after the fact that we could be so beautiful, right? We have the same clear skies. We'll keep them all day. At the bus stop we go. It's a mix of frosty 20-something degree calm wind spots. If you have the wind blowing, we saw those branches moving out on the west side. Your temperatures are above freezing. We'll top out about 50. It'll be really nice when the kids get out of school today. And by the way, here's the wind at 12 o'clock noon. Again, those east strong winds shooting out of the gorge. Dead calm today, we think, down in Salem. Chris McGinnis has your morning traffic. Rod, got some breaking news over in southeast right now. Just getting word of a house fire not far from Central Catholic High School near the intersection of 24th and Ash. I wanted to let you know about that. We will certainly keep you posted the freeway drive this morning. Here you go. Your inbound commute on the Banfield near Lloyd Center still in pretty good shape there. We'll switch gears and take you to Clark County. I five out of uh, Vancouver still in pretty good shape there as well. Guys, I've got no major freeway trouble just yet. Everything just putting it all together. Uh, it's just some kind of freak accident happened that we have no comprehension of, of what it was. That father is looking for answers this morning after his 19 year old son Riley disappeared over the weekend on a family hunting trip east of Astoria. The Coast Guard has called off its search, but the family says the Clatsop County Sheriff's Office will continue looking for their son today. They'll be sending Marine patrols to search the lower Columbia River around Carlson Island. That's where Riley and his father and younger brother were duck hunting Saturday. Riley's dad says they split up into two small boats, but they were always just a few minutes from each other. He says Riley stopped responding to text messages and seemingly disappeared. Search crews found Riley's bag and his gun, but no sign of him. In the immediate area, there was no sign of struggle. There was no sign that he had even attempted to reach for his cell phone, go for his cell phone, which is in his bag. Um, everything was in proper order in his bag. And it's literally as if someone just picked him straight up out of his position and carried him away um, because there's no sign of, of any type of struggle. He had such a mystery at this point. Riley was wearing waders and he likely had his face painted in camouflage, so he may be hard to spot. Although his relatives worry that he's not alive anymore, they are asking everyone in the area to keep an eye out. Homeless campers have posted up underneath the Marion Street Bridge in Salem for a long time now, but the city now warning those campers they're going to be cleared out. Trash has piled up and police are often getting calls about violence there. City officials have even stopped giving out permits to volunteer groups that normally deliver meals and supplies to people under that bridge. Yesterday, one of the groups that has been doing this for the past 15 years delivered one of their last free meals there. The man accused of kidnapping 13-year-old Jamie Kloss is due in court today. Jake Patterson has been charged with kidnapping and two counts of intentional homicide. 
He allegedly kidnapped Jamie after killing her parents with a shotgun inside their Wisconsin home almost three months ago. Jamie managed to escape a cabin in the town of Gordon on Thursday after being held captive for 87 days. She's now staying with her aunt. This weekend at the church Jamie grew up in, community members gave thanks for her return. I tingle because I've been praying for her since it happened. I don't know the family personally, but it's, it's wonderful. She's a strong girl, and we're blessed to have her back. Police say they haven't found a connection between Patterson and the Kloss family. It's five minutes after six now. We're going to turn to the government shutdown. It's now in day 24. It's the longest government shutdown in our country's history, and President Trump is not letting up on his push for a border wall. Yeah, the president is also facing mounting questions about an FBI investigation into his relationship with Russia. NBC's Susan McGinnis is following the very latest on both situations from the Capitol. Now the longest in U.S. history, the government shutdown has federal workers worried about making ends meet, including Border Patrol agents. A lot of the employees uh, work double shifts and with no paycheck. So that's a slap in the face. And still no give on either side of the stalemate in Washington. The president has made numerous offers about this shutdown. Reasonable, too. Moving further to the Democratic side. Reopen government. Why punish people who are applying for okay. food stamps because the president is having a temper tantrum? The president is also lashing out at a bombshell New York Times report saying the FBI opened an investigation into the president's behavior following his firing of FBI Director James Comey, looking into whether he was working on behalf of Russia. The president responded on Fox News. Are you now or have you ever worked for Russia, Mr. President? I think it's the most insulting thing I've ever been asked. The president also denied a Washington Post report that he took extensive steps to hide conversations he's had with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Does the president have a right to conceal these conversations? Probably, but I don't think it's the right thing to do. It's pretty much up to him in terms of who he wants to read into his conversations with world leaders. That's just... Uh, the basic fact. Both stories putting the president on defense. As for the shutdown, one senior Republican is suggesting the president reopen the government for three weeks while talks continue on border security. In Washington, Susan McGinnis, NBC News. The Today Show will have, the Today Show that is, will have much more going into their show at 7 o'clock this morning. Of course, they're going to discuss the alleged links between President Trump and Russian interests. That coverage on the Today Show starts at 7 o'clock right after sunrise. It's 6.07. Time for a look at more headlines in your morning rush. Fifteen people died after an Iranian military cargo plane crashed during an emergency landing. That plane was trying to land just west of Iran's capital. It's not known yet why they were making the emergency landing. The plane skidded off the runway, crashing through a wall and into a neighborhood. Authorities say there was one survivor on board. Iran's Air Force said the crash is under investigation. A mass drug overdose in Northern California killed one person and put 12 others in the hospital. Police believe they were all exposed to fentanyl. Two officers were also taken to the hospital Saturday after feeling the effects of that drug. The CDC says fentanyl is up to 100 times more potent than morphine. Los Angeles teachers are going on strike today. They're demanding more staffers and smaller classes. Despite the walkout, though, the district says all schools will be open today. Officials say the teachers union and the district aren't close to a deal. They are still millions of dollars apart. And just into the newsroom, we're learning Pacific Gas and Electric is planning to file for bankruptcy. This comes one day after the CEO resigned. PG&E released a statement yesterday thanking Geisha Williams for her service. The utility faces billions of dollars in liability because investigators blame power lines for causing the deadly California wildfires last year. And a winter storm battered the Midwest and the East Coast over the weekend. At least seven people died in crashes on the road. The worst weather seemed to hit Missouri where they saw as much as 20 inches of snow. And that's your morning rush.